A while back, I made a video where I tried to recreate the look of Kodak HIE. For those unfamiliar with HIE, it is a black and white infrared film with no anti halation layer. So it gives this bloom to the highlights, and combine that with the fact that it's infrared, you get some pretty unique looks. Now in that video, I attempted to recreate that look using unconventional methods, and it didn't really turn out as well as I hoped it would have. Anyway, a lot of you left comments saying that I could have just washed the anti halation layer off the film to achieve better results. It was such a simple idea, yet it never even occurred to me to try this. I've never done anything like this before, but I just went for it anyway. First, I loaded the unexposed film into a tank, and then I rinsed out the anti halation layer. I decided to do this with Rolly Superpan because Rolly films have this thick, inky pre wash and I felt like it was a good visual cue, so I just kept washing it until the water came out clear. Then I let it drip dry overnight, and then the next day I plopped this small fan over the tank for over 8 hours. Now, I wasn't 100% sure if this would work. I was worried that the effect might be very subtle, so I decided to shoot two rolls, one straight out of the box and another where I would wash out the anti halation layer. There are two things that happened with this roll. First are the light leaks. Those happened when I was respooling the film and I just didn't spool it on tight. The second thing, and the more important thing to address, is this nasty splotching. I thought I was being clever. I've developed enough film to know that if your final rinse is just water, when you drip dry, it could lead to water spots and streaks. So I thought, well, to get rid of those spots and streaks, just use PhotoFlow. I really didn't think that through, and so what essentially happened was I just souped my film in photo flow, and it ended up looking like this. What was supposed to be a big brain moment turned out to be a real smooth brain moment, but at least there aren't any water streaks here, so I got that going for me. If we just ignore all of that and just look at the scans, there are some promising results. I trichromed most of this, and Looking at it, it's actually hard for me to discern a real noticeable difference between the two, mostly because everything looks awful. There are too many variables, like the light leaks, the spots, and the whatever. If there was a difference between the two, it's hard to pinpoint the cause. I did shoot a couple of frames without trichroming, and while I can't say conclusively whether or not it could mimic that HIE look, this last shot was the most promising. The foliage has that soft glow to it, but again, I can't be 100% sure. Now, unfortunately, I didn't shoot any more greenery because I live in the Pacific Northwest where the skies are perpetually gray and the sun is optional. So these were shot on an overcast day and probably not the strongest examples. The results were promising enough, so when the weather finally complies, I will go back out and do a side-by-side -side comparison with HIE. But in the meantime, it's not really possible, so I just wanted to shift the focus from the infrared towards the anti anti halation thing. If you look at these two light spots, there is a glow to it, so I think it is possible. But I wanted to shoot another roll focusing on that. Most of this roll was shot outside at night, but first here's this shot. This doesn't have that much of an effect, it didn't help that the lights were diffused, but that's not what I want to point out. It's these marks I want to address. I did all of this on 120 film. It would have been a lot easier to do this with 35mm film. With 35mm, all you have to do is remove the film, wash it, and then re-spool it into a cassette. With 120 film, you have to remove the film from its backing paper, wash it, and then carefully tape it back onto the backing paper and re-spool it. I actually explained this process in depth in my red scaling video, so I'm just going to gloss over the finer points here. Another big issue is unlike 35mm, where the film is safely loaded inside of a light tight cassette, 120 film is wound around a spool with the backing paper being the only thing blocking the film from being exposed to light. If the film is spooled too loosely, it will get light leaks. But if you tighten the backing paper too much, you'll get scratches, which explains some of these marks. While other marks like this is actually a fingerprint. When I wound this film back up, the film actually wasn't dry when I took it out of the tank. But I had most of the roll wound up already, so I just pushed on through even though it was still a little damp. I spooled, shot, and developed the roll within hours of winding it, so it wasn't really that big of a deal. For these shots, I metered for the highlights, mostly because doing trichrome long exposures is a little tricky, and because it was dark and getting late and cold, and I didn't really want to stay out any longer than I had to. But it's enough to show that, yeah, it does have that glow to it.
I wanted to be able to show some shots that had a little more detail to them, and I also wanted to be able to compare the difference. This shot has nothing to do with washing off the anti halation layer. I just thought the colors were too good to pass up, and this is the risk you run when you don't carry color film but have black and white film and some trichrome filters. This next one on the other hand, I feel like we're starting to get there. If you look at the street lamps and the passing cars, you can see the difference in the halation. And if you look at the building over there, you can see that the sky has that hazy glow around it. I had high hopes for this one, but it didn't quite turn out the way I wanted it, but it still had some okay bits here and there. For this shot though, you can see that even with an anti halation layer, you can still get some halation, but without it, it goes to a whole other level. From the lights below the bridge to between the metal beams, there's a whole smorgasbord of blooming colors. And the sky also has that soft bloom to it. Now, I know some of you might be asking, well, what about color film? Well, I tried. This was the result of a series of problems cascading one after the other into each other. The first problem is when I washed the film, I didn't let it dry long enough. And then when I started to wind the film back onto the spool, I noticed halfway that it was still damp. And like by a lot. I didn't care, so I just rolled it up anyway. But after thinking about it, I realized I didn't want to put this film through any of the cameras I cared about. So I dug up my old Holga. I wouldn't care if I ruined this camera with some sticky slimy film, but when I was walking down the street, this strap just let go and the camera fell and the back just popped off, exposing the film. I quickly put the camera back together and hoped that I was able to salvage something. It was cold, it was wet, I think the film was ruined, so I just didn't really care anymore. So I blasted through the rest of the roll and I didn't feel confident in this roll whatsoever. And since I didn't care, I ended up using some old C41 chemistry I had laying around instead of mixing up a fresh batch. I overdeveloped it for about a minute because I knew this chemistry was old and it was still underdeveloped. Well, there's stuff here. And when I went to scan them in, I ran into another problem. The sticky film didn't help. So when it went through the film transport, either something got crooked or it caught on something and the Holga decided to chew on the edge of the film. I'm not sure if you could see the edge, but it kind of has this wavy crinkled edge to it, like a nice lasagna. I couldn't quite get a flat negative, so these scans turned out a little wavy and out of focus. Oh, and there's also big scratches all throughout the film. This was a complete mess. I will eventually get around to trying this a little more competently, but in the meantime, let's never look at this ever again and forget that it ever existed. Can you remove the anti halation layer? Yes, at least with Rolly Superpan, and it gives pretty cool results. It does take a little bit of prep work and some time, but if this is a look that you like, it's totally worth trying yourself. But not this. Don't do this.